Okay. Hi, welcome. If you've got any questions, please do pop them in the chat and we can talk them through. Happy to answer any questions about exam techniques, stats, mechanics, or anything else. Hello everyone, if you're just joining, uh, just pop your questions in the chat and I'll kind of answer them chronologically. Hi, uh, when they're a box plot, when do you include or exclude ex uh, outliers? Um, so uh, if you look at my stats uh, video, I explain when you, how you clean up the data, it's to do with either the interquartile range um, or the standard deviation, a certain number of standard deviations. So, um, in the stats video, I really, it's probably about 10 minutes in, uh, probably even less than that to be honest, probably about five minutes in, it, it's in there, it gives it to you perfectly. Or if you just scour through the notes, it says. Okay, if we have the graphics calculator, do we need to show working? Sorry, it's just. Uh, do we need to show working when answering a Q uh, line? Yeah, P is greater than as there is no need to make it smaller than the graphics caps. Uh, so I would always say show your working as much as possible, if, especially if you know uh, what to write. I would say maybe if you're not sure what's right, then maybe you can get away with it. Um, but the, 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 <clears throat> the exam boards are more than happy for you to, because you'd just be getting these numbers from tables anyway. Um, so whether you write one minus the probability or whatever, if you just get it from the graphics calculator, it, it, it's seen as fine. I hope that answers your question. So X longs, yeah, sorry, I didn't really answer your question, uh, but it, it, it's, in, it's in the video. Um, have you seen the stats video? No, so if, if, yeah, so if you're doing a box plot, you can exclude the outlier uh, if it's not within that range. Um, just wait for the plane to pass over my head before I continue. Um, so it, if, so you exclude the outliers if it's, it doesn't meet that criteria of 1.5 times the interquartile range or two times the standard deviation from the mean, um, you wouldn't include it in the box plot. But I, I would just make it clear when you're doing that, um, that you're excluding that, that piece of data for the reason that you give. Do we need to show how we got the continuity approximation or can we just write it out if we know it? Um, I, I would always show it if you can. Um, if you just know it, then ultimately you, you'll get the majority, if not all the marks. Um, but always show you're working if you can. Welcome to the, the stream, guys. Thanks for joining. Giving up your Saturday for revision. We're working hard here to get the good grades. Okay, any other questions? Because we've had three brilliant questions so far. We're only five minutes into the stream. You're welcome, JLK. Thanks for popping into the stream.
Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining, we're up to 10 at the moment, 10 people in the stream. Please do ask the questions. Will the grey boundaries be much higher this year as papers were slightly easier? Um, the ultimate, the, I mean, I'll be honest here. The ultimate answer is we don't know. Um, in my opinion, it, the, the grey boundaries are pretty consistent with A-level maths. Um, but I, I don't, Jin Wu, I don't know if you're doing LXL or AQA or OCR um, or something else. Uh, certainly the AXL, I'd say, I'd say that they might be like 5% higher than normal, but you just don't know. Yeah, AXL, the, the, I would agree that some of the papers, uh, both the papers we've seen so far have been slightly easier than normal. But do you know what? I, I, I we, we just don't know with the great boundaries. Um, ultimately, they work it out depending on the percentage of A's and A stars that they want to give out. Okay, could you do another example on hinges on a wall, please? Okay, so hinges on a wall, uh, X lines, you, you just take moments about two different points, one at the hinge, um, because you don't know where the reaction force is gonna be at the hinge, um, and then you can find out everything else, and then you take moments about um, another point, any other point, and then you can find uh, out the reaction force at the hinge. Um, if you give me a question, I'm happy to go through it. Um, let me try and find an example for you. Uh, JLK, what topics do you fancy will come up in the mechanics paper? Um, again, uh, it, they're pretty consistent mechanics papers. Um, I've got a feeling, just looking at the last couple of years, if we're talking about LXL here, um, I've got a feeling that there's going to be quite a nasty projectiles question, just because they haven't, they haven't done one recently, but they did it maybe three, four years ago. Um, so one where they ask you to give you a formula uh, in terms of like horizontal um, distance or the vertical height, uh, often often they, they can have some quite nasty um, formulas in there. So projectiles is kind of the, the one that I think is gonna be nasty in the mechanics paper. Um, in terms of uh, stats, uh, I think, oh, so you, are, you just asked about mechanics. Um, in other things that I think are going to pop up, uh, I, I think there's going to be a horrible motions on the slope question uh, with friction. Uh, so I would definitely revise that. Um, if a value is in the critical region, do you accept or reject the null hypothesis? Uh, it, dep it depends what the, the null hypothesis is. Um, so it's um, if you're saying that it's going to change, then if it's in the critical region, then you say it, it's changed, which means you're, um, it means you're rejecting the null hypothesis. Does that make sense, BHG? So if it's, if it's in the critical region, that means there's sufficient evidence to say that it's not the null hypothesis, therefore you reject it. Um, stats topics do I think will come up? Um, well, hypothesis testing, because it comes up every time. So if you don't revise that, frankly, you're a fool. Um, what other stats topics do I think are gonna come up? Uh, large data set, again, is just, it can be absolutely anything. Um, what else? I think, I think they're gonna do uh, quite a few questions. I think they're gonna have quite a few small markers. So lots of one, two markers. Um, that's just my instinct though. They've been kind of moving towards that recently. Um, so I, I think uh, that's something that they're gonna do in stats because it kind of hands itself to stats in that way. Uh, lots of kind of interpreting the context of the question type questions um, when they just give you some data and they ask you to find mean, variance, stuff like that. Uh, that they'll ask you, um, they'll ask you to kind of um, interpret the data that they give you. Uh, what uh, Paper three, gonna be a long day. Uh, I hate me mechanics. Well, mechanics, do you know what? It's not that bad if you know the assumptions. Um, uh, so yeah, so if, if you know the assumptions with forces and and everything else, uh, that there, there are lots of easy marks to pick up. Suvat should really be bread and butter at this point. Um, 
and and do you know what if you haven't watched my video already tenjin then you d you definitely should because I, I cover it all in under 60 minutes uh could i do question four uh question four where sorry third question down third question down from what am i being stupid sorry excellent I, i'm not sure which question you mean hopefully it's similar to the mock set four paper yeah that i i saw that paper bhg and at the <laughs> It was a nice paper. Uh, hello, two questions. Uh, hello, Owen, how are you doing? Uh, one about tension on an inclined sloped pulley. Okay, is the tension the same on both sides? Uh, and also, which way is the reaction force when the la ladder is angled onto the wall? Okay, so let me draw. So first of all, inclined slope. So yeah, let, me, I'm, let me just make sure we're talking about the same thing. Is this the kind of thing you're talking about here, Owen? For the pulley question? Yeah, okay, so the tension here is has to be the same if it's inextensible, okay? Uh, so the tension is definitely the same. Okay, so the tension is definitely the same. Um, the acceleration is also the same, okay? Because they're connected particles. So um, the tension is definitely the same. The acceleration is definitely the same. The forces acting on each thing might be different, uh, but the acceleration and um, tension is definitely the same. In terms of your second question, uh, ladder on a wall. Hang on, let me just go get some tissue to rub off my... Actually, this will do. Um, to rub off my board. So ladder on a wall. Okay. So we, depending on which, because it, it depends which one's rough. Sometimes you have a rough wall, sometimes you have a rough floor. Uh, so there's going to be friction. So let's say there's a rough wall. Okay. So if we think about which way this ladder is going to move, it's going to slide this way. So the bottom is going to go out. Um, so the bottom's going to go out, which means which way is the top going to go? Well, the top's going to go down if the bottom slides out which means friction is going to oppose that. So friction is going to be going up, okay? Uh, the reaction force here has got to be vertical. And the reaction force, it depends if it's a hinge here, but if it's not a hinge, the reaction force is just horizontal. It, and they are different, so let's call that R1 and R2. And then we've obviously got the weight of uh, the ladder. Does that make sense, Owen? Yeah, so, and so it's two different equations where T and A are the same, correct. Where can I find mock set to paper? Uh, not sure which one you're talking about there, Anwar. Uh, General AK, hello, welcome. Okay, what do you think an A star will be this year? I really want an A star, but I feel like I, I will get an A. Uh, tangent, well, do you know what? Ultimately, let's not worry about the grey boundaries. The important thing is... Um, cause the gray boundaries won't even be set yet. Let, let's make that clear. They, they get the results in and then they decide the gray boundaries. You do the best you can do. You get as many marks as you can then you're giving yourself that best opportunity to get an A star. So if it's on a hinge, Owen, then we don't know the direction of this reaction force. So we, we just call it whatever. And then we need to take moments at this point and at this point. Uh, to find R2 when we resolve forces. If it's on a hinge, that is. Tenjin said he, uh, like, 5% more than... Yeah, so, yeah, X, X line. So, yeah, the grey boundaries could be 5% more, they could be the same, they could be lower. Ultimately, I, I would, and if anyone on the internet tells you they know what the grey boundaries are going to be, they're lying. Um, I'm being honest with you guys. Um, they're, they're just farming views ultimately because because they know you guys are so interested in it. Um, it, it it's almost impossible to say where the great boundaries are going to be unless you work for one of these exam boards, which the majority of people on the on YouTube do not. Um, so uh, it, if it was down to me, I, I think just as a, an estimation that they're, they're probably going to be very, very slightly higher. Okay, how do you do inverse binomial? I'm not sure what you mean by that. I'm assuming you mean finding a point, uh, Rena. 
Uh, Jim Rui, that there, there, there are examples in real life where the tensions aren't the same, but not at the level that you're doing it. Because you always assume that it's a light, inextensible string or rope or cable, um, that basically means that the tension is the same throughout. So you, the tension is always the same. If it's the same rope, obviously if you've got two different cables then the tension could be different. Uh, could the tension be different when the pulley is rough? Um, first of all, I've never seen a question where the pulley is rough, but in theory, uh, I would say that the tensions would still be the same. In fact, no, the tensions will still be the same, but the difference is if the pulley is rough, is uh, there'll be reaction forces and frictional forces within the pulley, which we currently ignore. But good question there, Owen. Yeah, tension, I'm not going to lie, I, th I think the projectiles question this year is going to be the mad stuff that you're talking about. Um, I'm trying to think of the last time I saw it. If you look at, tw I think it's 2018, and it's OCR, but it can still happen in NXL. If you look at the OCR 2019, or it's 2019 or 2018 paper, uh, you'll see the level of projectiles can go to, and, and it's a horrible question. Um, I've just, my gut instinct just thinks that's what it's going to be. Yeah, they may put projectiles with vectors, but I mean, to be honest, you still just split it into horizontal and vertical components when it's vectors. Oh yeah, Jinwoo, in, in any of maths, if any of the math papers, pure, uh, pure or applied, they, they will always combine topics. Um, so, that, I mean, for example, like you, you look at the question that I've got on the board here, uh, we're combining friction, resolving forces, moments, that there's, every question will have multiple topics in it. Is it the ones where they want, want, it, uh, want the form with tan alpha and just no numbers? Yeah, exactly, X lines. So the ones where they get real theoretical and they don't actually give you any numbers and they just want you to play with trig equations, basically, uh, those are the horrible ones. Uh, and why, if I'm being honest, with the large data set, it's not about revision, it's about luck. Uh, you've just got to pray that, that, that they don't screw us over. Um, ultimately, with the large data set, there's very few resource, resources out there, and there's a reason for that. And that's because no one really knows what's going to come up with the large data set. Uh, it's just all about putting it into context, making sure you know your stuff, and then it... It's con and every question you answer on the large data set, it's context, context, context. That's the most important thing. That's where all the marks come from, is context. I've been uh, a horrible stats queue where they do arithmetic sequences with discrete distribution. Yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that's nasty, um, excellent. Um, I, don't, I, I kind of want to see the question, but at the same time, I really don't, because it probably is disgusting. Um, discrete distribution. Discrete distribution is quite a dying thing as well. Everything is continuous these days. Um, oh, and yeah, uh, also when you've got an inclined plane and it gives tan alpha, how do you do the components simply on the block? Okay, so when they give you tan alpha, uh, let me rub this off. So when they give you tan alpha is a number. Let's say it's three over four. Okay. Um, actually, it makes your life easier because we know that tan is sine over cos. And that still equals three over four. So basically they've given us tan alpha. Sorry, they've given us sine alpha is three and cos alpha is four. And in all of our calculations, when we're splitting it into components, um, we're gonna be using sine alpha and cos, cos alpha anyway. So you just times it by three and you times it by four. Uh, so actually when they give you tan alpha, 
They're actually making your life easier if you do it this way. I hope that makes sense. I mean, that, that, that's normally a top tip. That's kind of one of the things that is uh, useful and a lot of people uh, struggle with. Because what, what they end up doing is they end up doing the inverse of turn to find alpha. But in reality, if we use this trig identity, uh, we can split it up and it just makes our life easier. And people freak out when they see tan alpha. They're thinking, just give me the angle. Uh, but if you do find the angle, you can still get the marks. It's just, it's just not, you're making your life trickier. Okay, uh, some papers are mad. I get so many, so many different marks on different papers. Yeah, it, it happens own. But do you know what? The important thing is your score across three papers. Um, and ultimately, uh, if you're getting different marks, uh, that's just because you, you're, you're, uh, knowledge will be really good in some areas and potentially weaker in other areas. So when when they come up, it's um, it, it it's it's just you're just struggling to do it when the difficult topics come up. Um, okay, uh, yeah, tangent exactly. They're normally a, a Pythag triple um, because then it, it, it that's why I did three and four um, because then it, they're just nice numbers. Uh, so like I say, they actually make your life easier. Um, could you explain when friction is less than mu r? Yes, absolutely, Pavan. So, friction is a limiting force, right? So, let's say, let me get rid of this. Uh, so, let's say we've got a rough surface here. And, I don't know, we, we've, we've got some sort of particle. If I'm pushing it this way, let's say with 10 newtons, okay, I'm not going to go into mu r at the moment. Um... So I'm going to be pushing it with 10 newtons. If this, if this ball is not moving, okay, that means the friction is going to be 10 newtons, okay? Because it, because it's stop, it's not, it's not moving, okay? So the friction is equaling the force. Now, if I up this to 12 and it still doesn't move, that means the friction is going to be like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to meet the challenge, uh, and it's going to equal it as well. So they'll both be 12. So in this case where it's not, so let's say F max, we can work it out. F max is equal to mu R. Um, but let's say F max in this case, just as an example, is 15 Newtons. Okay. So if the, if the force pushing it is less than 15 Newtons, then friction won't be 15. Friction will just equal it. So again, so if, 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 and I can even change the direction if you want. So let's say we start pushing it that way, 10 newtons. Then the friction will be that way, 10 newtons. It will just equal it. But then let's say uh, this becomes 20 newtons. The maximum friction that this surface can give is 15. So that's, when, that's why it's called F max. I hope that makes sense. A lot of people struggle to understand the concept of friction in that way. Okay, hope that answers your question, Pavin. Uh, Owen Morris, have you done the specimen paper? I found that one the hardest yet. Yeah, nice. Um, can you find the OCR projectiles question? Is it OCR A or B? A, uh, Jinwoo. Um, I'll try and find it in a second. Let me try and answer these questions. Paper 3, 2020, question 4. Have a look at it. Yeah. Uh, what exam board? NXL. The louder question with Sen Alpha. No, no, no. The horrible stats one. Um... Okay, uh, does, does, I can't even remember who asked this. Oh yeah, Pavin, does this make sense with the, with the friction? Let me have a look at these questions that you're talking about. Paper 3, 2020, Edexcel. Question 4, let me have a look on my phone. Great, you're welcome, Pavin. No worries. Uh, K in the table. Yes, Tenjin, look at part C. Right, I'm intrigued now. You got me hooked. A level, maths, uh, and you're talking about stats, aren't you? Stats? Yeah, stats. Okay, uh, I found the question. Uh, 
discrete random variable da, 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 where k is constant show that the value of k is that okay that's not difficult uh random variable da, da, da. Uh, for anyone wondering this is the question we're looking at um This is the question that people are talking about in the chat. Uh, little frog, so what means friction does not affect the mass? Uh, so I think you mean the mass doesn't affect the friction there, little frog. Uh, it does affect the friction because mu r, r is the reaction force and the mass affects the reaction force. So the mass does, if you think about it, if you had like a ton of bricks on, on the ground, I'm gonna remove this question now. Um, so little frog, so this, this R, this part of the friction um, comes from the reaction force. So let me get a different color just to make it really clear. Uh, so if this is, let's say 100 Newtons, then reaction force is 100 Newtons, which is gonna affect the F max. So the mass, the mass does change it. Why is sin alpha not three over five? Isn't it three, four, five treble? Um, hang on, I'm confused what you're talking about here, Tenjin. You're talking about when, when we split up sine alpha into, sorry, tan alpha into sine and cos. When I just gave an example of tan alpha equals three over four, and we said sine alpha over cos alpha equals three over four. Yeah, we happy with that. So then we can just say sine, al sine alpha is three and cos alpha is four. But yeah, you can you can draw out it. To be honest, it's all proportional. You can draw it out. If tan alpha, let's say this is alpha, is three over four, that means opposite over adjacent is three over four, which means this is five. Yeah, actually, no, you're right. You're right, Tanjin. Um, so that means oh, I've just rubbed off my triangle that I just drew. Let me use a better working pen. So if tan alpha is three over four, okay, and let's say that's alpha, uh, the opposite is three, the adjacent is four, hypotenuse is five, which means we can get cos alpha, which is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, would be four over five, and sine alpha would be three over five, using this triangle that they gave us in inverted commas. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna move that down. I'll move this up. Yeah. So yeah, attention. Yeah, you're right. Mistakes on my part. Apologies. Right. We've got any other questions? Don't mind me. I'm just eating a Haribo Sour Sparks. If you haven't had them, elite sweet. Check them out. Kizzy, can I explain projectiles? Of course I can. Okay, so projectiles, okay, they're, they're projected at some uh, angle, let's call it alpha, or it could be horizontally projected. And basically, we're just doing SUVAT, but we need to split everything into horizontal and vertical components. So let's say this is, I don't know, 15 meters per second, okay, where it's projected, and let's call this 30 degrees. Okay, that means the horizontal component, uh, so that's our hypotenuse, this is the adjacent, so this is gonna be cos. So I can write this as cos 30, and this is 15, and this is 15 sine 30, okay? And now, with that, I can just do vertical and horizontal, SUVAT, okay? 
So sous vat, and depending on what they want, would depend on what these answers are. But the U, okay, so the U um, for this, so the vertical would be 15 sign. Sorry, I've not given myself enough room. And the horizontal will be 15 cos. Okay, and then if they're saying they want the maximum height, then we know the vertical component is zero. Let's say they want the maximum range. Well, that's when S equals zero. Um, the acceleration for the vertical is minus 9.8 because of gravity. Uh, and that's basically projectiles in a nutshell. I hope that answers your question. Uh, sorry, Hewad. It, if I'm being honest, I went live uh, during the lunch break of the cricket. I don't know if we've got any cricket fans in here, but I'm a massive cricket fan. Um, so I, I just thought I'd go during, during the lunch interval. Anyone else watching the cricket? You're welcome, Kizzy. Uh, Hewad, I'm still probably going to be here for another 15 minutes. So if you do have any questions, do, do put them in the chat. Yeah, horizontal is, is SVT. Um, because there's no acceleration, uh, so we don't we don't really need to worry about it. Um, but it, it, you can you can just do SUVAT as well. SUVAT works with with no um, with no acceleration because zero acceleration is still constant acceleration. I think A is always zero as horizontal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Tenjin, you're right. Yeah, so for horizontal, uh, the horizontal component, there is no acceleration. Um, all the acceleration in projectiles is just gravity, and that's only in the vertical component. Uh, but you can still use SUVAT, as I just said, when, when um, acceleration is zero. Or you can just use speed distance time. Uh, in connected particles, how do you know which way tension acts? Um, in the opposite direction. So let me show you. Um, let me get rid of my projectiles. So let's say, hang on, let me actually, so in connected particles, how do you know which way the tension acts? So let's say, let's take a really simple, let's take a car and a trailer. Okay, and let's say the car is moving this way. So because the car is moving this way uh, and it's pulling the trailer along, um, it is going to be opposing. If you think, so take, take your perspective of the car uh, and you, you're pulling a trailer behind you, it's going to be pulling you back. And then if you take your perspective of the trailer and you're attached to the car, the car's going to be dragging you along. So that, that, that's often a useful way. And because these are equal, when you consider the whole system, these tensions cancel out. Uh, but if you just consider the car, then we can find the tension, or you just consider the trailer, we can find the tension. Um, so it, you just take the perspective of each of the different particles um, or the objects that are connected, and hopefully that'll give you a good insight into which way the tension will be pulling. Uh, oh, wow, a few questions. Hope Australia don't build a partnership now. Yeah. Talk about the cricket. Yeah, no, I hope they don't. Um, I think the Smith wicket just before lunch is huge from Ben Stokes. Um, all the normal distribution equations, understanding when to use, please. Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Do you mean when to use, like continuity correction, when to use sampling? Okay, moments recap. Yeah, I'll come on to that. Are you going to be doing any videos going over past paper questions for paper three. Is that something that people want? Do people want me to go over past paper three questions? I would happily do it. Uh, when you use continuity correction in stats, uh, depends on your exam board, Felix. Um, it basically depends on the, the size of the sample uh, is when you do the continuity correction. Uh, thanks, uh, Joshua. Um, I am a teacher. I do try to explain things well. Uh, can you explain the difference uh, between the, the different FRs. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean, Umar. Uh, the, what, the different frictions, is that what you mean? Okay, so it looks like people want me to go through past paper three questions. Do you know what, do, do you want me to do, just do one paper or do you want me to take a, from a, a range of past papers? 
Which one would you prefer? Yeah, tension's right. So the, you mainly use constant Felix. So when you use the continuity correction is when you go from binary, so you're approximating a binomial distribution to a normal distribution is the, is the main one. But it depends on the size, the size of uh, the number of trials. Okay, so you guys want a range? You want me to go through a range of papers? Do you know what? What, what, remind me, when are your exams? I should know this, but when is, is it next week or the week after? Would you recommend to, Umar says, would you recommend to memorize from a large data set? Um, remember as much as you can. Um, <laughs> remember as much as you can and pray that they don't make it stinker because ultimately the large data set just stumps everyone. It does. I don't, they need to get rid of it, personally. Just, as long as you write it in context, you're good, okay? As long as you write in context, you're good. Uh, can this live be rewatched? Do you know what? I don't. I was trying to work this out after the last time I went live. Um, does anyone know the answer? Can Can you Can you rewatch lives? Do I need to post it? I don't. I, I'm I'm a bit of a novice with that sort of thing. Uh, mixed papers, so more unseen practice. Yeah, definitely can do that. If you're okay with it, I think a compilation of the hardest ones would be cool. I can try and make one and send it. Uh, Tenjin, if you want to make a paper of the hardest questions, I'm happy to go through it, make a video on it. That that would really help. It would save me some time. Saves me making it. Uh, so it's on Tuesday. Oh, see, me being able to get it out by Tuesday, that might be difficult. Um, I can try. June 20th, is that Tuesday? Let me have a look. June 20th, is that Tuesday? Uh... Yeah, so it's this Tuesday. Um, I can try. I can try. Uh, what is trace? Uh, trace is very small, okay? Uh, so if there's only a trace, I'm assuming this is what you're talking about, Anwar. So it's, it's only when there's only a tiny little amount, so almost negligible um, amount of stuff. So, for example, if you look on food packets, sometimes it will say there are a trace of nuts. Basically, that means there aren't any nuts in it, but it might be made in a factory where there are nuts. So there might be tiny, tiny bits of nuts in there. Um, that's what trace means. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. If it's still public, then yes, Dr. James Maths. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely public. Um, oh, you're talking about whether my live stream. Yeah, I can keep it public. Yeah, could definitely go back and watch it if you can. Can you go over Venn diagrams and probably related questions? They are always confusing. Yes, Umar, give me a second. Can you go over the weather stations? Uh, I'm assuming you're talking about the large data set. Any de <laughs> any deadlines specifically? Um, well, these people need it before <laughs> these people need it before Tuesday, and they don't want to be doing it last minute on Monday. So, um, but at the same time, if you make it last minute, I don't want to let you down and put do all your hard work. Um, you can do it. One last push for us, sir. <laughs> yeah. uh, what do you think the grey boundaries will be like? Umar, so I suppose you can re-watch it. We've spoken about grey boundaries. Uh, ultimately, there's no point trying to guess what the grey boundaries are like. Just, you're going to have to be patient. Be patient. Wait till you get your results in August. No one knows what the grey boundaries will be. Anyone that says they're doing the internet are lying. Um, but I think, in my opinion, was up, increased by 5%. Uh, boys, let me hop on that. Okay, yeah, tension. It, don't make it too long though. I don't want to make. I don't want to make like an hour long video. Maybe maybe do. I don't know. Let's say let's say four stats questions, four mechanics questions. Let's try and make it forty five minutes. I don't want, I don't want people out here having to do loads and loads of work, especially this close to the exam. So yeah, four of each tension. People would people be happy on that? Sixteen people in the chat. We love to see it, guys. We love to see it. Tenjin coming through for the boys and girls.
Okay, uh, any any questions that I've missed? Venn diagrams, Umar. So Venn diagrams is all about shading. It's all about shading. Let's call this A. Let's call this B. So if they're asking for the probability, and this is just knowing our language, and, and if English isn't your first language, then obviously this is harder. Uh, so let's say, let's start with an easy one. A intersect B. Now when it's intersect, it's double shading. Is that in the screen? No, not quite. Let me move it up. Double shading. Okay. And when it's a, a union, it's anything shaded. Okay, so if I shade A, and I'll do it in orange, and I shade B. Okay, so if it's the intersect like it is here, I want the stuff that's double shaded, which is the stuff in the middle. Okay, and then simply, depending on what you're picking from, you do the total number of things uh, is on the bottom, and the number of things in the bit that that's double shaded is on the numerator. But let's say they give you a horrible one, something let's say like probability of not A union, I don't know, B. Let's say it's that. Um, now let's shade those two things. This is A, this is B. We have our universal set. Uh, okay, so we're gonna shade not A in orange. So that's everything outside of A. Okay, so that's not A. Now we'll shade B in pink. So B is there. Okay, and it includes the middle. So now because it's union, got all the colors here, got all the colors, because it's union, okay, it's anything that's shaded. So you're gonna take all the numbers in the outside bit, all the numbers in B, and the numbers in the middle. You're just excluding this crescent of A, okay? so. You, so let's say all these numbers add up to, let's fit, say, 15. Let's say there's a 3 here, then it'll be 15 over 18. I hope that makes sense anymore. Okay. Don't think it will be more than 60% for an A out of the grey boundaries I've seen. There's not been any higher. Okay, so would you recommend revising projectiles, moments, connected particles, what else? Um, to be honest, at this stage... I mean, it depends what you're happy with. Ultimately, we should we should all have our own personal list of what we're good at and what we're not what we're not good at, and focus on the stuff we're not good at. Um, so, for some people, they might want help with uh, suva. Some people might need help with projectiles. Some people might need help with moments, etc. Um, all I would say is that projectiles always comes up, moments always come up, suva always comes up. So, ju just re just I would at this point just revise general general mechanics at this point because. Uh, we're so close to the exam. Yeah, a lot of question, a lot of questions. If you know your stuff, they don't have to be scary. They don't have to be scary at all. Um, okay, for the union, you need to take away whatever is in the middle, right? Um, no, the union, you include this middle bit because it's shaded. It depends what we're talking about, though. I know what you're talking about in terms of taking it away. If they are, if you're trying to find. Uh, the probability of uh, A, you could, if they're independent events, you can do the probability of A uh, plus probability of B and then take away the middle bit. Um, that's what you're talking about, I think. Loudest questions are quite repetitive once you get used to it. Exactly. So VHG, yeah, just do loads of loudest questions. Look at the mark scheme. Uh, they're quite repetitive. You basically end up just resolving forces and taking moments. That's, that's, all, that's all it is. If you know how to do those things, you're going to be golden, guys. Really, you are. Um, but for the union, you need to take away whatever is in the middle. Uh, you said that, so oh, no, I'm reading the same thing. What would be the difference between not A and this? So if it was union here, sorry, if it was intersect here, it would just be the stuff that's double shaded. Now, the stuff that's double shaded is this bit. So on top, let's say, I don't know, there was a five in here, it'd be five over 18 as an example, okay? 
So when it's double, sh uh, when it's intersect, it's the stuff that's double shaded, which is just this stuff in B, not including the middle. Okay. Um, Summer, can you go over harder ones like A given B? Um, if you know the formulas, so, oh, what, do you know what? What's the probability of A given that it's in B? So if we're talking about Venn diagrams, so we know that this number has come out of B. So we can ignore everything else, okay? We can almost, let me just get rid of this. We can almost, we know it's come from B. We, we, that's all we need. Um, and we've got this little bit that, that's got A in it, right? Um, so our denominator is going to be the total of B, whatever that is. Um, let's just make up some examples. Let's say this is 5, this is 3. So the total of B is going to be 8. And then the what's the probability of getting A, given that I've taken it from B, well, the probability of me being getting A here is 3. So if it's a Venn diagram, the, the conditional probability is, is, is not too tricky. Or as Tenjin says, you can just use the formula. Uh, try to do matter supply papers. Yeah. So union in simple words is just a probability that it would be a or b or t all together exactly on exactly yeah somebody it is actually really simple is it it's just getting the wording right um if we, if you really try and think because I, I would never teach anyone to just learn like learn a method like just try and say oh well when it's this you've got to do this uh, try and understand the maths so when it's given b when it's they said oh well it's come from b then i only need to worry about the b um and this is where actually that formula that Owen spoke about came from, is from the Venn diagram. Uh, probability tables briefly. Um, I'm not sure what you mean, Hewad. Do you mean um, when it's like, so let's say X, and this is probability of X, one, two, three. Is this what we're talking about? And then let's say it's, I don't know, let's say it's X, two X, I don't know. X minus one, I don't know, is this the kind of thing we're talking about? Or are we talking about sample space diagrams? What are we talking about here? Okay, this thing. So all of these add up to one. So we can find the X straight away. So uh, this might be a spinner, it might be it, like a three-sided dice, it, it could be anything. Um, so all of these probabilities, let, let me make this clearer. Let me get rid of the Venn diagram. So let's take this example. Let's say it's X, probability of X. So that, And just as an example, let's say it's a three-sided spinner. Um, and let's say the probability of this is X, this is 2X, and this is X minus 1. Now, we're guaranteed to get 1, 2, or 3. So I can write X plus 2X plus X minus 1 is equal to one. So then that's gonna give me uh, 4x minus one equals one. So that means that x equals a half, okay? Um, and then if we're doing something like e of x, we just multiply these things together and add them, to that, add them up. So we do one times x, which is x, two times two x, which is four x, three times x minus 1 is 3x minus 3. You substitute your x in and you get e of x. I hope that helps. Okay, we're coming up to the 50 minute mark. I'm going to say five more minutes and then I'm going to head the crickets back on. Uh, you guys should probably go revising rather than talking to me. Um, can you please go over normal distribution for the changes in the mean? Um... Expected, it's the expected mean. It is, so BHG, so EX is basically what, what we expect the outcome to be. It might not be on your exam board, it's not on every exam board. 
Um, Kizzy, I'm not sure what you mean by uh, normal distribution for the changes in the mean. Could you clarify? Also, if you've enjoyed this live stream, please, please give us a subscribe. Please. Don't want to beg it, but I helped a lot of people out here today. Uh, normal distribution hypothesis testing. Um, Kizzy, go watch my stats video. I've, I do all the hypothesis testing there. Um, it, it really helps. Um, I, I cover everything there. It's in the second half of the, the video. Samples with mean for normal distribution. Again, it's in the stats video, Jordan. Go have a look at it. I've covered everything. Covered everything in that in that video. I, unless you talk, unless you've said you've watched it and you still don't understand, happy to go through it. Um, so it'd be either a t summer. This is. Uh, for the Pearson's rank, um, what would we use for the hypothesis testing? Well, it's either the uh, row equals a value or it doesn't equal a value. If it's greater than row, if it's less than row, uh, and that'll be your null hypothesis, depending on what the question says. Um, then they'll give you values of row or they'll give you data to find row, although I don't think that's on it anymore for most exam boards. Um, so, so ultimately they they're going to give you row and they're going to say, and your hypothesis, uh, your null hypothesis would be whether row equals a certain value. Um. Yeah. Uh, row is not always equal to zero. Uh, it is often equal to zero, but not always equal to zero. Thanks, Joshua. Legend, subscribing and sharing. Okay, Kizzy, you still don't understand the normal distribution hypothesis testing. Um, okay, let me have a look. So I'm just picking out the live stream here. I've shown you the Harry, Harry Bow Sour Sparks. I'm also eating Galaxy Chocolate Orange. If you hate people eating, hopefully you can't hear me. Um, Right, let me get the notes up that we're talking about. Kizzy. No, don't want to hear my voice. Also, they never tell you as a YouTuber, when you're editing videos, it's horrible to listen to your own voice. It's disgusting. Especially when people in the comments are saying, oh, he sounds like he, he's going to kill himself. Sounds depressed. I'm not depressed, guys. Just teaching you math. Okay. Um, hypothesis testing. Normal distribution. Okay. So here we go. So basically, they give you... This is quite small. Uh, yeah, I know, Tenjin. I know, I know. Who's saying that? Um... It, they basically give you uh, a mu and they say, is mu going to be this value or not? Um, and they say, is it going to be greater than, they might say, is it greater than slash less than, or is it not that? So we so we've got these three different types here where we've got the null hypothesis over here on the right. So uh, they might say, is it less than the new uh, mean? Is it more than the new mean? Or is it not the new mean? Uh, which changes the one-sided slash two-sided in terms of your tails. And then basically, this is the part that we need here. Um, this is uh, what you need to look through, Kizzy. So I'm really struggling here because I'm holding the pen. Um, and this tells you what to do in every situation. Okay, this tells you how to do every situation of the normal distribution within hypothesis testing. Um, okay, so uh, where do I get the summary sheet from? Uh, well, it's a combination of my stuff 
and uh, some stuff from a teacher website uh, that I'm not going to disclose because uh, I don't want them copywriting me um, <laughs> uh, more than anything. But it, it is a combination of, of my own work and uh, a website that teachers use. Okay, guys, any last minute questions before I go and have some lunch after pigging out on these sweets and chocolate? I'll tell, I'll tell you what I want to say before we go. Uh, Tenjin, if you're going to send me that document, um, you can email me. You can email me. My email is attached to my TikTok and uh, my YouTube. Just email it to me. Um, Take your time. I'd rather you revise um, if you don't want to do it. Ultimately, we're quite close to the deadline now. Um, yeah, four each. Four, four stats, four, try and get a range of questions. And I'll try and make like a 45 minute, half an hour video going through them. I would say middle to hard difficulty. Tenjin, you're a legend. Absolute legend. Uh, yeah, I'll make it public so everyone can watch. Don't you worry about that. Thanks for popping in. Anyone that's popped in and asked a question. If you've just been lurking in the background, I hope you've learned something. Uh, yeah, just from the table, Summer, or from uh, your calculator, uh, depending on what they give you in the question. That's how you find the critical value slash critical region. No worries. Good luck with your exams on Tuesdays, guys. Right. See you later. Leave a like. Subscribe if you've hung around for the whole stream. You're a legend. Right. See you later. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Good luck.